Our interview today is with Prof. Gurli Vitun. Um, recently um, ending your term as uh, DVC research here at the UFS. Okay, and back in academics. Absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, thinking about your, your career um, so far, um, maybe how did you get into um, into research, and how did that culminate in your in your role as DVC research? Um, I think I've always wanted to be a researcher, even at an undergraduate level. I really enjoyed the practicals and sort of independent projects that we could do. So, um, so I think it's it's an interest that's been ingrained or fundamental in in uh, in my career and what I've always done. I've always enjoyed research. I've always enjoyed uh, being in a laboratory and doing some of the practical things. So, so that's I think where it started. I remember when I was in grade nine, I already wrote. Uh, in my school report that I wanted to be, that I wanted to do a PhD in microbiology. Okay. Okay. So I've known this for a long time. Um, and then, um, of course, I, I um, did quite a lot of research before I became the DVC research. Um, and it's always been, uh, for me, a pleasure working with young people, working with students, uh, collaborating with students in the laboratory and writing up what we find. So I think that's been the, the interesting part for me is working with students. Uh, I like working with people. Um, and that's, that's really been fun. Uh, and then yes, it's, it's influenced, I think, the way that I, I've managed, uh, the, the research portfolio as part of the rectorate team. Um, in that I obviously have a clear understanding of what research is all about. I don't think you can take up those positions if you don't. Um, because if you haven't done a master's or a PhD, uh, you, you clearly don't have a, a good comprehension of what it means. Um, yeah, and that's, that's how it started. And now I'm, I'm back in an academic environment. I'm helping the Center for Graduate Support. Uh, with a program where we help young academics write their scientific articles. And I'm really excited about that because I read, you know, all sorts of different things on education and theories in the humanities. Um, and that I'm enjoying. Uh, and again, uh, this, this theme throughout my career of, of trying to help people, develop people, is, is still something that I'm really, um, really sort of focusing on. I like helping people sort of establish research careers or get that article uh, submitted. So we've worked, I've already worked on five of those um, and a few are submitted already. So we're holding thumbs yeah. that will get it published. So I think um, a theme of, um, of helping other people to establish their research careers has always been something that I'm passionate about. Um, and I value this opportunity to work with the Center for Graduate Support. Uh, to see if we can get a, 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 a bunch of novice article writers to also get their pu stuff published. Some of it I don't know much about, but I, I try. At least then I edit and make comments about the structure. So. But as you say, um, I mean, you do need the background in, in, in research to, to support um, students and researchers in that way. And that's something that you, um, w one of the things that you did in your portfolio as DVC research is to encourage not only academic staff to do their masters and PhDs, but also um, support staff, like in the library, um, in the Center for Graduate Studies. And I think you can definitely see the difference in how the support is given. Yeah, I, I was quite adamant that at least the heads of the support divisions must either be registered for a PhD or have a PhD. Um, and we've been really successful, as you know, in the library. Betsy Eister, the previous um, head of the library, uh, is registered for a PhD. The current head of the library, Jeanette Molopiani, is registered for a PhD. Uh, and then in the other divisions that report to me, all of those uh, have, or reported to me in the past, all of those have PhDs. So Glenn Taylor has a PhD. Uh, Witness Mutsi had a PhD. 
um, and uh, Cornelis Haugenmeier during his term um, as uh, the head of the Office for International Affairs also obtained his PhD. And I think that was something that's important to me, is not just to say that academics should improve their qualifications, but also support staff uh, must work really hard and see if they can improve their qualifications to better support our academics. Um, and of course, Cornell, you are also one of those that I'll be working on to do that PhD. Yes. You have been resisting uh, for a long time. I've been carefully considering. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> carefully considering that. I'll, I'll help you to be less careful in considering <laughs> registering for that PhD. Absolutely. I think it's important. Um, um, definitely. Um, with, with supporting, um, in my role in supporting researchers, and becoming part of research projects in at the university, it is um, unbelievable the amount of um, uh, knowledge around research that that you build um, that you don't know. You don't know. It, did the the DVC research role uh, give you any additional insights into research? Um, I think in the in the support process, definitely. Um, and, and the diversity. I think, of course, I'm a natural scientist, so the humanities and social science work um, was something that I had to make sure that I understand. Um, and their focus on books and not so much public um, um, uh, journal publications, um, as well as the, the different citation indexes that works in the humanities and social sciences. Um, and the, the different kinds of support that humanities and social sciences require in comparison to laboratories and equipment and, and that type of support in the natural sciences. Um, also, even just through this this digital, uh, the Center for Digital Scholarship, I definitely learned a lot about um, research support at an at an um, at a different level, mm. um, not paper based, not not access, but you know the broader things of. Um, how do you support research from from this environment? So I, it was an incredible ten years. I learned an incredible amount, and I'm so grateful for it. Um, and also, you know, the leadership skills, the opportunities for growth, the maturity. I think that comes with being at that executive level for ten years was very valuable for me. Yeah, must, and I'm grateful. Yeah, and it must also change the way you now approach your own research. Yes. Or the projects. Yeah. Yes. So, so apart from the Centre for Graduate Support, um, what else are you working on at the moment? Right. So I probably have two PhD students uh, who will work on on an interesting project, uh, looking at um, looking at uh, effective uh, nutrition for school children. Um, so I'm excited about that. I was involved in a project 15 years ago that looked at. Um, omega fatty acids and the influence that that has on cognitive abilities of children and we showed that if the kids take in uh, omega fatty acids their cognitive functions improved in comparison to the placebo so it's something similar to that um, and then I'll probably have a PhD student from Gabon um, and I am also working on quite a lot of grant applications so we have a grant application with a, a German partner that's been submitted to the European Union. Um, and I'm also involved in three of the intra-ACP mobility applications, uh, also EU funding that we're trying to, to get. So we'll see, we'll see if we actually get the funding, but at least we're starting to work in that direction. So, so, so all sorts of playing for me, I think. Yeah. I'm back to playing and I'm grateful that I don't have a full diary so that I have time to read and time to think and just time to consider things. It isn't just a rush from the one meeting to the next Exactly. Um, that I'm grateful for. Yeah. Um, I, I know you like to travel. Yes. Correct. Yes. Um, is there anything else that, aside from research that, that you're interested in or that you spend a lot of time on? In my personal life or in my work yes, environment? Yes, yes, both, <laughs> both. Um, so, so I really like to cook. 
So my husband and I do a lot of cooking, and um, I have this idea of creating a pop-up restaurant at my house. So oh. we'll see. <laughs> we'll I, see I if go. I. <laughs> Thank you, Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if that that comes off. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of interests outside my work environment. I've always said that I want to be bigger than just my work. Um, so yeah, I do do a lot of things yeah. outside my work. Just just for interest's sake, who's your favourite celebrity chef? Ah, oh, there's many. Um, so I currently use a lot of Ottengeni's recipes, but I think Najella Lawson is probably one of my favourites. <laughs> <laughs> the way she uses language, I think, is just beautiful. Yes, absolutely. So. <laughs> yeah, there are so many. There, there are many. There are so many, and yeah. and it's interesting. They they different approaches. But, but I agree with you in terms of, um, uh, you know, n not having different things outside of the research because that can be very consuming um, and your mind can be on that all the time. Um, so with these, with the new, the, the, the emerging researchers that, that you're dealing with now, what would you say to them and um, how to keep that balance? Um, because... Well, they're emerging researchers, so they do have to put in a lot um, of work. I, I think that's one of the challenges when you're early in your career and you're trying to establish yourself and you're trying to build connections. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. And normally these young academics are starting with a young family. Uh, they have, you know, you know, children to, to take care of, um, a new house, a husband or a wife, all of those responsibilities. And it's it's tough. I, 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 I remember I was there as well. It is tough keeping all those balls in the air. Um, I think the most important thing is to just try and stay calm and do what you can um, and just try and keep as many balls in the air as you can. And I think the most important thing that when I look back at my career is to try and do the things that matter. Try and do the things that you that they'll measure for promotion. So try and you know make sure that the teaching portfolio is 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 right and ready, and that you're working on it. Try and work on your research outputs. Write those articles. Get them submitted, even if they're rejected by a journal. You know, just keep at it. Use the journal's comments to improve the manuscript and submit it again. Don't give up. Be resilient. Um, and don't get caught up in all sorts of politics and um, other responsibilities and beautifying the tea room. Stick to kind of the things that matter. Don't waste time on things that don't matter in terms of promotion. Try and speak to people who are in influential positions Say that you're willing to serve on the committees. Um, get yourself, don't say no to a nomination for a Senate committee, for instance. Um, so try and try and jump on those opportunities where you can show leadership because that plays an important role uh, in the promotion criteria. Yeah, be involved in the society, um, the national society of, of your field. Um, yeah, and then try and have as much fun as you possibly can. Um, it's not meant to be such a burden. It's meant to be a joyful thing. We spend so much time at work. Um, it's good if we actually enjoy it. So if you can find things that you enjoy, do those. But do the things that matter. Don't waste time on things that don't matter. Uh, and serve on committees that are influential. Uh, and make sure that you... That you that you convince people of your leadership. I think that's that's important. And making use of the support. Absolutely. Like the Centre for Graduate Studies, like the library, and make sure you know where those support structures are and where they can help you. Absolutely. I think that's, that's a very good point. We should actually, in the support environment, tell the academics about that more. But use, use it. Ask people for help. I think it's also good to... If you have a mentor, even if it's like an informal mentor, it doesn't have to be a formal uh, mentorship relationship. Um, I still sort of bounce ideas off my PhD promoter. Um, uh, both of them, my 
promoter and co-promoter for my PhD are both A-rated scientists who are still in the system. And I often use them just as a soundboard. Or um, he, one of the, Mike Wingfield, who was the one of my co-promoters, um, recommended that I attend um, a Harvard um, management program. And that's really had an unbelievable impact on the way I look at things how I assess quality or how I think about quality. So if you can use a mentor who can guide you in directions that will help you grow, I think that's where you want to be. And, you know, listen to advice. If you get advice, uh, it's it's a good idea to... You don't have to listen to all the advice, but at least some of it you have to um, kind of listen and follow the advice. But having a mentor and having someone senior around that you can ask for advice is really fantastic um, and if you can have that and it can be a short-term mentorship but it can also be a long-term one like mine has been a 20-year kind of mentorship relationship um, and I don't see them every day but um, they remain mentors in, in my life so it's, it's been great find the long-lasting mentorships <laughs> and there are they they are, yeah, they, they are they are um, they are people that really want to help young people mm -hmm. develop so if you can't find anyone then come and talk to me <laughs> i'll find someone appropriate okay we, everybody's got that <laughs> invitation now your diary's going to start filling up again <laughs> that's fine <laughs> i'm uh, i'm already mentoring one or two um actually three academics so that helps a lot some uh, young academic in microbiology that i help and advise and you know, ask where's that article, are we getting it published, has it been submitted? Um, just, I think, just to have someone to say, you know, you've sat on it for three months, can we kind of focus on that and get it done? Mm. It's very helpful. And it's it's meant to be supportive, I think that's the most important thing. It's with an attitude of trying to help, uh, not an attitude of, you know, I'm going to police you or whatever. It's, sure, I care about your career, we've got to do this, come on. <laughs> so, being, yeah. being a cheerleader, <laughs> I, I'm such a good cheerleader. I actually, my children tease me about being such a cheerleader. They're like, moms, please just stop cheerleading us. So, <laughs> I'm a, I'm like a super cheerleader. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. <laughs> Corley, thank you very much, and all the best um, with all the new ventures um, that you have got going now. Thank you very much, and I'm constantly asking the library for help. So, uh, so thank you, Cornell, and we'll be we'll be working together closely. Yeah. And I'll I'm, I'm going to miss the, the library environment, so I'm going to make sure that I come back and see you guys. So, Definitely. thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>